Hello, hello, hello. The lights, please. <laughs> um, okay, we're just trying to sort out our connection. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. We try to see we are good to go. Alrighty. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um Happy Sabbath, welcome. Um, great. All right, please sit on the light. Um, all right, you good to see you, everyone. Happy Sabbath, happy Sabbath, happy Sabbath. Um, we we're trying to sort out the connections, and I'm sure now we are good. Uh, oh, but so, sorry, thank you for waiting. Thank you for waiting. Happy Sabbath to you too. Alrighty. Um, hope you guys had a great week and you were seeing the hand of the Lord in most or everything that was going on. You yeah. know, life is hectic these days and we just thank God with each passing day. Uh huh. So before we start, I'm going to ask Uncle Leeds to pray for us. Uncle Leeds? Alright, let's pray. Our Father who art in heaven, I'd like to thank you this afternoon for allowing us to come here and discuss your word. May you allow us to say that which you are going to give unto us. May you also allow our hearts to accept and change on that which you want us to change. When all is said and done, may everyone who is watching and us who are presenting found our names written in the book of life. I'd like to thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you. Alrighty, so today we are on chapter... Chapter 4. <laughs> chapter 4. Okay. Excellent. You know, I'm seeing they saying there are five people, so I'm now I'm thinking it's chapter 5. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. <laughs> Uncle Lidl was trying to multitask. Anyway, we are on chapter... Four oh, yeah. of the book, The Great Controversy. And so the chapter is The Wild Dances. Welcome, Miss Timbella. How are you doing, sweetie? Welcome. Um, okay, so we are doing chapter four, and the topic is The Wild Dances, um, who are also known as the Valdos, um, the Wild Dancians. We have a very, um, there are quite a number of names that they were known by, but um, the popular name is the Wild Dances. Okay, so um, the rough and brief summary of the Wild Dances is that after we have um, an era of spiritual darkness, you know, people then begin to flee from the cities. They begin to flee persecution. And so you have people running to the mountains, to the valleys, from Italy, from... Oh, okay, Mlungi is saying we read a bit, hope to read the whole. Okay, that's fine. That's great. We thank God. Um, so they ran from the cities to the mountains, to the valleys, and in all sorts of secluded places, okay? And so a movement was then formed that was known as the Wild Dances. But you have different names for different um, eras in history. And I'm telling you this so that you understand the background which I'm going to explain. The reason why it's important for us to understand where they are coming from is that the historians, specifically papal historians, have tried to remove the link that existed between um, the apostolic church and the Waldensian people, okay? So they've tried to say, no, these guys are not the ones that have kept the true faith. Mm -hmm. There was a break at some point, and when these guys left, we remained being the true church. So that's why it's important to understand that it's a movement that has always existed. So the founder, the founder that is known is um, Peter Valdo or Waldo. And Peter then joined the movement at a later stage. He believes in something and he has a group of followers that believe in the same thing, okay? And then he realizes, oh, what we are believing in is, is exactly what the wild dances believe in. Yeah. And so they join the wild dances and then they become a joint movement. But the wild dances as a people were already there 
prior to Peter Waldo. Yes, you understand? Yes, yes. So this is what happens, and it's important for us to understand this history so that we notice that it's a movement that was ongoing from the apostolic church and should be going on till Jesus comes again. Okay, I hope you understand that part. So the Waldenses now move to the valleys and the mountains. They settle in, they build. Generally, they were living in caves, but they do have structures of houses and caves in which they put their livestock and everything. And so they settle there, they train their children, and their children are taught to farm. So every piece of tillable land, these guys would farm and develop it. And then you have what was known as the uncles. I wrote that on the code of um, the flyer for this week, the uncles. The uncles were the pastors. And so to run away from calling them father, they decided to call them uncles. I found that to be very interesting. And I also thought, this is my thinking now, that because they trained their children in what to speak, they didn't want the children to say they're with other children and then the children would say, oh, so the pastor or the father said this. So if the children would just say, uncle said this, people wouldn't get a glimpse of what is going on behind closed doors. So I found that to be very interesting. So the fathers now, the uncles, um, were the pastors of the Waldensians. They would be trained in missionary work before you were deployed to a specific valley. There were seven popular valleys. Before you were deployed to a specific valley, you had to go into mission work. And others died in mission work. So it's said that the greater number of the Waldenses were physicians. Mm. Yes, they were physicians. So the Waldensian uncles were physicians um but there were others that were involved in other trades like selling jewelry selling fabrics carpentry and a number and making shoes shoe making okay yeah. so you have those guys coming through and then what then happens is they'll go to a house and say oh we've come to do this we've come to sell this fabric do you like it and if they see that the person is most likely to receive the word of god they would then preach to that person yeah. An interesting point that I found was that their average lifespan was two and a half years. Once you decided to become an uncle, you knew that your average lifespan would be two and a half years. And I thought, how many people actually went and said, even if we're going to live for two and a half years or less, I want to do this for God. Mm. So, you know, they went and then the chapter goes on. There's persecution, caves are burnt, people are killed, but... We will never know how much we are thankful to the Waldensians, even future generations, because of the work they did in the preservation of light and in the preservation of the word of God. So they translated the Bible to European languages, but with the exception of English, it was Italian and French, some of them, and that's what we have. So that's the brief summary mm. of the chapter. Uncle uh, Lee. Thank you very much. Uh, yep. Um, so we'll get right into it. We are doing chapter four of the book, The Great Controversy. Welcome, um, Notando. Welcome, welcome, Fazai. Welcome, Tari. Welcome, sweeties. Thank you for joining us. We are doing chapter four, and now we are getting into the book. Um, I believe I have the first one. Yeah. All righty. You can just... Let me get to it just now. So it's saying... Amid the gloom that settled upon the earth during the long period of papal supremacy, the light of truth could not be wholly extinguished. In every age, they are witnesses for God. Mm. Men who cherished faith in Christ as the only mediator mm. between God and men, who held the Bible as the only rule of life, who hallowed the true Sabbath. How much the world owes to this man posterity will never know you know i thought this to be very interesting that amid the gloom that existed in the darkness remember we said the dark ages was the period where the bible was banned mm. but it said that the light of truth was not wholly extinguished okay um nashvin is asked we are in chapter, chapter four, four nashi we are doing the wild dances so it's chapter four okay mm. so it said that in the darkness that existed in the world there was light that existed. And this light was found in the mountains and valleys. There's a quotation I want to read. It's from the book, The Desire of Ages. I'm making sure that I write down my links um, so that you guys can follow through. It's saying here, 
Though the wicked, the desire of age is page 168. Though the wicked know it not, they owe even the blessing of this life to the presence in the world of God's people who they, whom they despise and oppress. But if Christians are such in name only, they are like souls that has lost its savor. They have no influence for good in the world. And through their misrepresentation of God, they are worse than unbelievers. Mm. So it's saying that though the world knows it not, mm. Christians, channels that receive the bidding of the Holy Spirit, are where the blessings of people come from. So similarly, the darkness that existed in the world, the little light that was there, the little good that was there, was because there were Waldensians who did not extinguish the light of truth in their lives. Mm -hmm. So these Waldensians remained faithful to God. The Waldensians remained faithful to God. And this is why we have light not being completely extinguished. So it's saying how much the world owes to these men, posterity will never know. Posterity being future generations, generations that are come, yet to come. They don't know. You know, I was thinking on the Sermon of the Mount where it said that you are the light of the world. You're not the light for Christians. You are the light of the world. So your influence has to benefit not only you, but the world. And the world more because they are in darkness. So similarly, this is what happens in the world. Dancy um, forms such an interesting thing. Uncle Libs, you want to go through? All right. Uh, Nombuyo is asking uh, the definition. I think the definition of an uncle. Oh, okay, okay. The uncles, hi, mommy, welcome. The uncles were pastors. pastors yeah. Uh huh. I'll think of the Italian name. They're called Bar. 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 Uh, yeah. I've forgotten the Italian name, but it starts with a B. Okay. So the uncles were the pastors. The pastors in the valleys. Mm -hmm. So instead of calling them father, remember they were drawing away from the papacy. Yeah. So they wanted to run away from the system of papacy of calling someone papa father mm. and so they chose to call them uncle to show the fondness that existed between uncle and children blah 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 and to also um ensure that they kept the purity of the pastors yeah. you understand so it was direct reference to that verse that says call no one your father that's what they were referring to so they chose to call them uncles uncles yes. yeah all righty um the, the next quote um uh, it says the history of God's people during the ages of darkness that followed upon Rome's supremacy is written in heaven, mm. but they have little place in human records. Mm. Few traces of their existence can be found, except in the accusations of their persecutors. Hey. Uh, you know, if you look, you can just try and Google. You won't find much of the work they really do. Uh, even I, when you read it from maybe the the Romans, mm -hmm. when they write about them, they're just accusing them. There is no much credit that is given to these guys about how they preserve. I think most of the things Mara mentioned. Mm -hmm. But there's one thing that I just want to mention. You know, in this world these days, uh, with social media, the way we are doing things, it's so... Uh, easy for you to get pressure from others to say if you do something and it's not recognized it's easy for you to actually see that ah, i did something for the lord or i did something for the church i did something for the family and no one did recognize it mm -hmm. as long as it's the holy spirit pushing you to do something you should actually do it mm -hmm. not because you're looking for recognition from other people mm -hmm. but because there are records in heaven mm -hmm. where everything that's good that's it's being written and when judgment comes, when one day when we are going to be saved, that's when you actually see, uh, that's where the crowns come in now. The to say, stars. the stars on our crowns. To say, mm -hmm. oh, in as much as you didn't have maybe uh, a channel, you didn't even have a chance to, to stand by the pulpit, or you were not having uh, like a big name in the society, mm -hmm. but you are doing good things to other people, showing the love of Christ to others. Mm -hmm. It is being written in heaven and mm. you actually get your credit mm. uh, on that day i think we can go to the next quotation okay sweetie you have the next one uh, so in great britain no this one 
Yeah. I said I wasn't taking that one. All right. Okay. You know, I wanted to add on that. In as much as there's the book of um, the bad deeds that we do, there's also a book that has the good deeds that people do. And so heavenly records um, have record of the good things that we do. And that makes God such a great judge. Because, I mean, when you appear before earthly judges, the account of the good things that you do work as mitigating factors to say, oh, this person has done this good. Mm. But to really just say, oh, because this person has done this, let's do this. It's not something that's often done. Mm. So I think God is a very fair and loving mm. judge in that regard, in that he takes record of what we do. Speedy, are you there? Yeah, so okay. I'll read the next one. Um, as the work progressed, the papal leaders and their convents encountered the primitive Christians. A striking contrast was presented. The latter were simple, humble, and scriptural in character, mm. doctrine, and manners, while the former manifested this superstition, pomp, and arrogance of popery. The emissary of Rome demanded that the, these, Christians, these Christian churches acknowledge the supremacy of the sovereign pontiff. The Britons meekly replied that they desired to love all men, but that the Pope was not entitled to supremacy in the church and they could not render to him only that submission which was due to every follower of Christ. You know, there are two points that I just want to point out. Um, as Christians, we just have to follow the footsteps of Christ. It's so difficult these days with the pressures that we have, the way we are living. You know, we I was actually talking to Mara to say, you know, we always have goals when the year starts we say this is my goal and those goals are something that everyone should see by the end of the year that i've accomplished this i've built this beautiful house i've uh, actually bought this car i've um, attained this degree and stuff there's nothing wrong with getting those things mm -hmm. but if our life is being pushed by those things pump things that other people see not about what we are doing towards gaining uh, the kingdom of god mm -hmm. uh what we are doing to change our characters how we are impacting other people how we are being nice to others if have you grown in christ has your christian life uh, improved if we are not aiming for to to grow in that then we are just being like this um these fathers who were just uh aiming to grow their um, their church, but not doing anything for Christ. So if we are going to learn something from the world, is we should be like Christ, just being meek, just being humble, and um, uh, growing in Christ. Then the second um, second point uh, is uh, that uh, you see these guys, in as much as they were against uh, the papal system, they said we were just going to treat you as any other people. It's, uh, I found it difficult for me to say, if you discover that someone is very evil or someone is not as nice as I maybe expect, um, maybe they are corrupt, they, they are not really nice, uh, it's so easy to develop enmity towards that person. The moment you hear their name, you, you, are, you get angry or you start saying bad things about them. But you know, the Waldenses say, we are just going to treat you like everyone else. Mm -hmm. We will respect you as a human being. If we see you, we'll just be uh, good to you. But we are not going to place you uh, above any other people. We also sometimes in society, we treat other people like they are more equal than others. Just because maybe they have more money or mm -hmm. they are pastors or something. But uh, the Waldenses are saying everyone before Christ is equal. And that's how we should treat each other. I'll give the next point to Mark. Okay, I'm going to go through the comments, so just give me a minute. Oh, my. Mm. oh. hold on. All right, there are comments that I saw. I'm you see, I typed in something. Mr. Ngati had typed in something, but I'm failing to scroll down, so please forgive me. Um, and then Cheryl, okay, hi, sweetie. Um, she's saying, can you please send the paragraph numbers? All Um, okay, we're using this book, so it doesn't write. So I'll just say the page number and then what paragraph it is on this page. Hopefully, you'll be able to follow through because it doesn't write like the ones we usually read, it doesn't write the paragraph number at the end. So I'll be guessing, okay? 
So um, Daisy, hi, sweetie. She's saying if you just read the Bible and keep the commandments, but don't necessarily go and preach to the world like the world dances, does it mean you don't qualify for heaven? Excellent question. All right, let's pin down that question. Um, Uncle Libs, remind me. There's a quote that I'm actually going to go through, which is talking about that. So thank you, Daisy. That's such an inspired question. All right, I have the next quote, which is really just a pass through. Um, I don't want to explain much on it. It's saying, churches that held to the faith and practice existed in Central Africa and among the Armenians of Asia. So this is page 59 in my book, and it's the second paragraph, which is starting by in the lens beyond the jurisdiction of Rome, okay? So it's, it's talking about how, in the lens outside the jurisdiction of Rome, there were other people that actually believed in Christ. So I, I found it to be quite interesting that before we have colonization in Africa, we already had Sabbath-keeping Africans. Did you know that in Egypt, Christianity came in the first century, and then he later moved to Eritrea and um, Ethiopia yeah. in the 4th century. So this is before we have, this is prior to colonization. When the missionaries actually come in with the gospel that, oh, you should believe in Sunday, blah, blah, blah. The Ethiopians are like, what? Mm -hmm. No, we know that we worship God on Sabbath. So I just found that to be quite interesting and that just put it in there for the sake of um, those that do love history as I do. So my quote now is on the next page, page 60, and in the paragraph, it's paragraph 3 in, on this page. It's starting with, among the leading causes, that's the first line in the paragraph. So it's saying, amid the prevailing error and superstition, many, may I please have your phone, I sent that to your phone. Amid the prevailing error and superstition, many even of the true people of God became so became so bewildered that while they observed the sabbath they refrained from labor on the sabbath but this did not satisfy the papal leaders they demanded not only that sabbath be hallowed but that the sabbath be profaned not only that sunday be hallowed but that the sabbath be profaned and they denounced in the strongest language those who dared to show its honor. It was only fleeing from the power of Rome that any could obey the law in peace. So we are being told here of the period where um, people then decided to say, you know what, we'll go to church on Sabbath, but we'll also refrain from working on Sunday. But this was not enough for the papacy. The papacy said, now, nah, we want you to profane um, the Sabbath, and hello the Sunday. So I was reading testimonies to the church. I think it's volume two. I couldn't find my copy. Where it was talking of when the National Sunday Law comes, we shouldn't seek out persecution, which is why she says that we should already be in the countryside. So we should do good works on Sunday. We can go out to spread the gospel, to preach to people, but then on Sabbath we should keep it holy. And so I was thinking of um, reading the Review and Herald now. There was a chapter that was talking Okay, and it says here, testimonies to ministers and gospel workers. The chapter that speaks of the snares of Satan revealed. Um, the quote that I want reads like this. Through those who have a form of godliness, but know not the power, we can gain many who would otherwise do us harm. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God will be our most effective helpers. Those of this class who are apt and intelligent will serve as decoys to draw others into the snares. Many will not fear their influence because they profess the same faith. We will thus lead them to conclude that the requirements of Christ are less strict than they once believed, and that by conformity to the world, they would exert a greater influence with worldlings. Thus, they will separate from Christ. Then they will have no strength to resist our power. So the, in, the instruments that are going to be used to achieve this, as we are told, are those who love the world, worldlings, and those 
who are of the same faith but don't really hold it to the same extent i'm sure you know i was talking of uncle libs of um the issue of comparative holiness that at some point i had a level where i'll say ah, you know what i'm not drinking i have friends that drink that profess to be sdas so i'm not too bad i might make it to heaven and that is very dangerous now this is what this quote is telling us that the devil is going to use such people to lure us back to the devil so you might say oh my friends fornicate i don't fornicate i'm fine my friends drink i don't drink so i'm fine but that's not it remember the standard is christ it's and christ, christ yeah. alone mm -hmm. so the devil is going to try and employ these people to even say on the sabbath at some point, you know, you used to think, oh, I can't do this on the Sabbath. It's profaning the Sabbath. But over time, you find your friends doing it and you're like, ah, it's not that bad. We can do it. So I found that to be quite interesting. And I really pray that God helps us to not to refrain from profaning the Sabbath because the papacy and the devil ultimately is happy if we do this. And so, yeah, that was my quote. Uncle Liz, I think you have the next one. I have the next one, but we mentioned it earlier. It's oh, talking okay. about these guys that they preserve the scriptures. Okay. And yeah, I think you connected to say put in this code. All right. The next one is saying this is page sixty one and it's paragraph two. God had provided for his people a sanctuary of awful grandeur, befitting mighty truths committed to their trust. To these faithful exiles, the mountains were an emblem of immutable righteousness of Jehovah. They pointed their children to the heights, towering above in unchanging majesty, and spoke to them of him with whom there is no variableness, no changing, no shadow of turning, whose word is enduring um, the everlasting hills. And then I'll read the last, which says... Um, in their fidelity to the law of to his law god's servants should have been as firm as the unchanging hills so you know we are told in steps to christ that nature is the second bible it's a revelation of jesus i've often had people ask me that so how about people who live prior to the bible how will they be judged blah 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 and the answer to that is god has made manifest revelation of himself through a number of things yeah. there are people who have not had access to the printed word but the holy spirit has spoken in their hearts there are people who have not had access to the printed word but who have lived in you know majestic places where they've just looked at nature uncle liz shared how by just looking at the moon he was uplifted so for me that says a lot to say the nature that surrounded the wild dances was a consistent and constant reminder of who God was, his majesty. And in looking at those, they, they should have been able to see um, the majesty of God. And then the last quote which I read was saying that in the, their fidelity to his law, God's servants should have been as firm as the unchanging hills. So we, we mentioned that these guys had been staying in the hills for some centuries now. Mm. So their children would speak of their great parents and their great grandparents having lived in those hills. As they spoke about that, the hills had not yet crumbled. It should have reminded them of who God is. Mm. You know, we're looking at the terrain of the mountain that gets to the hills. It's so high. So it's said that the Roman soldiers, when they actually siege the the Waldensian place that they were staying, they would sometimes force them to run off the cliff. Mm. It was so high. And, you know, you just imagine how God was able to sustain them that long day. Mm. And so God was saying to them, my children, in what you are seeing, may it remind you of my love for you. And may this help you be faithful to my commandments as I have been unchanging shown through these hills so when we look at nature may we remember who and what god is in our lives yeah. uh-huh uncle Lee, do you have the next one okay um the next one uh what page is it we're now on page 62 oh yeah. i have the next one yes oh yeah the next one okay so it's saying pure simple fervent was the piety of these followers of christ the principles of truth they valued above houses lands friends kindred and even life itself these principles they earnestly sought 
to impress upon the hearts of the young. <laughs> the principles of truth they valued above houses and lands, friends and kindred, and even life itself. And they sought to impart these principles upon the hearts of the young. I was looking at this and I was thinking of how, you know, we were watching something where, okay, I, I'm, a, I, I'm a pastor's kid, right? And there's a program that we used to have that my dad is, a, my dad is chosen, I'm not. And I was sharing with Uncle Debs how I have a problem with that saying. And I'll share with you in a moment why. Understand that when the Levites were chosen, um, the the family was anointed the entire family so as a child the lineage of that child as a child was growing up they were anointed and make meant to grow up as an anointed child mm. so their conduct was meant to be conduct that revealed child um god, god yeah. uh-huh so now we are told that we are a royal nation a holy priesthood, priesthood yeah. the priesthood now is no longer fixed on one levite family mm. the priesthood is there in the nyati family it's there in the tokota family it's there in the sena family it's there in the lumumi family it's there in all families and so when a child is born that child has the responsibility to uphold the priesthood mm. how does the child uphold the priesthood the responsibility rests, please take note of that, the responsibility rests on the parents to impart um, that selfless nature. And so I have a quote here that I wrote down, which is saying, it's saying responsibility for eternal interest, the great controversy, page 474. Fortify against corrupting influence, parents. You have taken, you have taken the responsibility of bringing children into the world without any voice of theirs. And you are responsible for the lives and the souls of your children. They have the attractions of the world that fascinate and allure them. And you can educate them so as to fortify them against the corrupting influence. You can train them to bear life's responsibilities and realize their obligations to God, truth and day, and the, and the bearing that their actions will have on their future immortal life. Mm. What this quote is saying is that you have taken the responsibility to bring children into the world. They didn't ask to come. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So the same way the children have come, when we have babies, they'll be called Maranatha Moyo. The fact that these children bear our family name mm. places a responsibility on us to ensure the spiritual nourishment of these kids as much as we do the physical nourishment of these kids. Mm. Your children are not born Seventh-day Adventists. But if you believe that it is good to be a Seventh-day Adventist, it's your duty to teach them to be Seventh-day Adventists. It's your duty to teach them to be God-fearing. Mm. And so, you know, the indifference that then comes with saying, no, children should make their choices, is somewhat contradictory to what the spirit of prophecy is telling us. Yeah. They should make their own decisions based on, maybe, today I want to wear my hair like this, but with regards to their spiritual upbringing, mm. it is the duty of the parents to ensure that the children are brought up in the way that pleases God. Mm. And so, um, counsels to gospel workers, ministers and gospel workers, speaks of the influence that the children have in the work of a minister. You know, Eli neglected to raise his children in the way of God. Mm. And because of that, when Israel had no prophetic vision, as Uncle Leaves' favorite song these days, um, it was a child. The child Samuel was then called to actually be the next prophet or the one that received visions for Israel. So I think as parents, let, let's reconsider, you know, to actually say it's our duty to raise up our children. When they are grown, if they choose to depart from God, it's okay. Mm. Your hands are clean. But if you've done your duty, 
you know, it's just important to say before God, look, I've done my duty. Um, I leave the rest to you. So whatever you believe in, whatever you believe in, if you believe that your children should be vegetarians, you, if you are vegetarian, your children should be vegetarian. When they are grown, they can choose to say, oh, now I want to eat meat. Mm -hmm. But don't start with feeding the flesh. Mm -hmm. Because when you start with feeding the flesh, it's going to be harder for them to overcome than if you teach them to overcome and then they later on choose to feed the flesh. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'll take the last quote, which is saying that um, the management and instruction of children is the noblest missionary work that any man or woman can undertake it's like the noblest okay let me read this before it disappears it's saying train up a child in the way they should go and win excellent fantastic um brother nyati i saw your comment powerful the selflessness of the world dances and then um so is saying parents do have a great responsibility on like eh, eh, exactly exactly we thank god that we do realize this um, obligation. So the quote that I was reading is saying that the management and instruction of children is the noblest missionary work that children, um, that women and men can undertake. Excuse me. Do you have children and you feel like you want to work for God? If you do, start in your own. Yeah. Start in Jerusalem, then Judea, then Samaria to the rest of the world. So if you want to work for God, let's start with our babies. Yeah. And Uncle Lee. Yeah, I think if we all uh, worship in our homes, uh, there will be no like problems in the streets because we all have uh, like churches in our own homes. Mm. Uh, the next quotation that I'm going to read, it's on page 63. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's the first paragraph on mm -hmm. that page. It says, every spot of tillable land among the mountains was carefully improved. The valleys and the less fertile hillsides were made to yield their increase. Economy and severe self-denial formed part of the education which the children received as their only legacy. Mm. You know, I actually learned something here. You know, um, as we grow up or as we live, we always wait for a conducive environment to really give our all to something. Even at work where we are employed, I'm always thinking, good, if I was the boss of this company, if I was the general manager, mm. I would do this and this and this. But these guys didn't wait to have maybe um, a good place. They were living in mountains. Mm -hmm. And they would actually cultivate like uh, on, on those sloppy areas. Mm -hmm. uh, in those tones, they would make sure that they produce something. Their kids were trained to make something out of all. Out of uh, those difficult conditions mm. so it's something that we should actually learn uh, ourselves to say whatever you're going to do tomorrow as we start a new week you should actually give your all uh, if God blesses you with a bigger uh, field to work on yes make sure you maximize it and produce a lot from it mm. we shouldn't wait to say until God has provided me with a better job or uh, a, a better place to work, then I, I'll actually give my all. Even mm. where we stay, um, yeah, where we stay, we should actually make sure that we have something that we are doing. Small gardens, small pots that we put flowers and everything. Uh, we are responsible before God. And we actually cultivate our talents. I then remember that uh, parable of those three guys one who actually said, I only have one, so I'm just going to put it uh, in the ground. Mm. We shouldn't be like that guy, but we should actually cultivate the fewer that we have, and God will actually bless us with more. Uh, the next uh, quotation that I'm going to read. Sorry. Okay, let me take this. It's saying, someone said something disappeared. Okay. Mr. Nyati is saying, well, dances were truly hard workers. That's very true. That's very true, and we thank God. Um, okay, Nomvo, Mami is saying that above worshipping, if we lived as Christians in our homes, we will be the greatest sermon to our children. Precisely. Um, you know, it reminds me of um, the quote that says that, um, okay, I'm forgetting, but it talks along the lines that children are more of imitators of what we do than listeners and hearers of what we say. Mm. And so in living Christianity, our children become Christians as well. Mm. So, you know, you will notice in your children, I noticed this in my younger sister, 
the things that my mom says, she's she's picking them and she's adopting them. You actually see it, ah, this is my mom. And I think those that have babies, you see it in your kids, which when someone does something, when Lulu does something, mommy, you really see that, ah, this is me. Mm. This is where she gets it from. So that influence, what your children grow up loving is the music that you... You know, the music I listen to is music I remember my mom playing when I was four or five. And that's the music I actually love and listen to right now. So I'm thinking if my mom listened to some type of music that was just off, I would probably, most probably, grow up loving that. And so it's that influence that we should guard to become Christians first at home. And who we are is who we are at home. So if we are not true Christians at home, the people that we stay with at home are most likely not going to be true Christians. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. All righty. Uh, I also want to read the next uh, quote which says, The pastors not only preached the gospel, mm. but they visited the sick, catechized the children, admonished the erring, and labored to settle disputes and promote harmony and brotherly love. Um, I actually learned something here. It's so easy for us to preach, to teach people uh, the gospel, but to do practical things like uh, visiting the sick um, or actually uh, showing love to others, it might be difficult. And I think it's a trap that the devil actually uh, give us to say, as long as you are a preacher, then you are okay. Mm -hmm. You actually now qualify for heaven. Your works are you might not say it, but the way you live now will actually show that uh, you are not really nice to people or you don't even have sympathy for, uh, for what others are going through. So it's a call to us to say, in as much as we strive to know what God requires of us, in as much as we are going to strive uh, to preach to others with what we have and with what we are doing and everything that we do, we should actually show that we know God and we... Uh, do things that um, Jesus would do when he was mm. actually down here. He's, it said that Jesus would actually take care of the needs of the people besides just preaching to them. Mm. Uh, we can move on to the next question. Okay, please, may I have your phone? I okay. have it in there. All right, the next one is saying, thank you, um, as the mine has reached veins of gold and silver hidden beneath the surface so that all must dig um so that all must dig who would discover its precious stores so the holy scriptures have treasures of truth that are revealed only to the earnest humble and prayerful seeker okay every new i will move two lines down every new truth discerned is a fresh disclosure of the character of its author you know, I was thinking of how we have a duty to dig. The truth is there, and it's hidden in the Bible. Mm -hmm. But the duty to dig is ours. It's ours yeah. So God is saying every meek. Oh, Mr. Nyachi is saying we have a Lulu here. Oh, great. Miss Lulu. So there are two Miss Lulus now. Fantastic. Um, so, you know, we have the truth that's hidden. And the parable says that when the man finds the hidden treasure, um, he goes and sells everything he has and for the sake of that treasure he buys the land mm. i was thinking about how how much are we willing to sacrifice for the sake of the treasure that god has given us mm. how much you know it's easy to spend sleepless nights this is not good and i was praying about it when i was doing my dissertation i could spend the night and sleep really late but now to watch something for two hours straight Speaking on the word of God, I struggle. And I think, how am I going to spend some entire nights in prayer, you know? So it's a matter of changing what we have accustomed ourselves to. Mm -hmm. To say it's okay to spend sleepless nights for school, that's great. But we also need to put, if not greater effort, in our spiritual lives. Mm -hmm. And so I have a quotation um, that I wanted to read. Mm -hmm. Which is saying, search for the treasure. The book is Christ Object Lessons. It's saying, um, page 109, Christ Object Lessons. The word of God is to be our study. We are to educate our children. Gosh, I don't know why children keep coming up. But anyway, we are to educate our children in the truths found therein. 
it is an inexhaustible treasure but men fail to find this treasure because they do not search until it is within their possession very many are content with a supposition in regard to the truth they are content with the surface work taking for granted that they have all the all that is essential they take the sayings of others as truth being too indolent to put themselves to diligent earnest labor represented in the word is digging for hidden treasure but men's inventions are not only unreliable they are dangerous for they place men where god should be hmm. they place the sayings of men where thus says the lord should be hmm. you know i was thinking about this my brothers and sisters that probably have beliefs that we have questioned in the past to say should is it not time that we rely on the word of god more than what the preacher the prophet the mm. pope has said to us is it not time that we should dig for this treasure on a personal level to enrich ourselves for what god has said to us you know the time is coming where the words that the priest or the pope or the prophet or the pastor says are not going to be so reliable it's important you know i commend um brother mlungi he asked for a quote that i shared last week and i had to actually find my reference because i just wrote it down at the bible conference and i read through it before last week's presentation and i shared and you know i thought that's the um the character that we have to have to say yes mara has said this leaves has said this the pastor has said this the pope has said this but what has god said God say, yeah. remember we are to live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of god and not from the mouth of the pastor or the mouth of the priest so may god help us it said that every um every new truth descend was a revelation of the character of god that is such a beautiful thing for you to first john first john okay i'll look up the verse which says that when you if you want to know that that the doctrines i speak are of me and not of god mm. first live by them mm. so the problem we doubt is because we don't practice the little truth that we have the little truth that God has revealed to us, we are not practicing it wholly. You know, I was sharing with my friends that I don't want you guys to be Seventh-day Adventists. I don't want you guys to have baptismal certificates from my church. Mm. What I want you guys to do is to say, from the word that God has revealed to you, how much are you living faithfully? And so may God help us to really do that. Okay, um, there's a comment from Cheryl. She has there saying, the book Child Guidance um talks about what sweetie move the side so that okay right. it talks about how parents should do what they want their children to do because children learn from their parents actions mrs white says as part of preparation um for children mm -hmm. parents should work on their characters and that it is better not to have children until one really <laughs> understands their responsibility precisely precisely and for me that has been <laughs> one of the reasons why i don't have kids yet because i am trying to build my character <laughs> for heaven <laughs> alpha lips is laughing that's very true um that's very true chiesa we probably won't reach um the most perfect characters that we'd want to have but it's important for us to understand our responsibility to god yeah and to our children specifically the virtue of patience like i've really been trying to learn the virtue of patience and i'm sure most mothers can care that there are times where you just feel like oh my goodness you've had enough so that's quite a powerful quote thank you chiesa for cheryl for sharing um natasha says we have sister kundai and um brother kudakwashi manyemo who are enjoying the lesson oh welcome sweeties welcome I don't know how old they are. For the younger ones that are joining, we have a session Friday night. Friday night. Yes, Friday night is specifically for the babies. Tonight, it's for everyone and anyone who can read, okay? Oh, this afternoon. this afternoon. Yeah, all righty. Thank you. So we'll move on to Uncle Libby of the next one. Yeah, the next one says, While the Waldenses uh, regarded the fear of the Lord as the beginning of wisdom, they were not blind to the importance of a contact with the world. A knowledge of men and of active life in expanding the mind and quickening the perceptions 
mm. from their schools in the mountains some of the youth were sent to institutions of learning in the cities of france uh, or italy uh, what it's saying here is you know sometimes you just feel like it's enough that i know i should actually stay in my own corner knowing the the word of god mm -hmm. as long as i am uh, in that corner just living by myself uh, i'm not sinning against anyone i'm just reading the bible but these guys would actually go on to the next uh the next level to say you know now we know what god requires of us so we are going to influence the next people mm. uh, we are going you know what i like about them they have trained their children mm. they had so much confidence to say in as much as we are going to let our children go um to these schools to these universities we know they are the ones who are going to be uh, a positive influence mm. you know when you look at your child and actually have that so much confidence you mm. would have actually done well in grooming your child so it's something that we should pray about even for ourselves and we can only do that if we are always dying to the holy spirit to mm. say whatever the spirit tells us to do are uh, we always following in little things we don't make our own decisions mm -hmm. but if god says turn left you turn left even when you are amongst the evil the evil people or those people who don't really fear god you know that whatever god is going to tell you there you are going to follow and you are not going to fall or get a uh, bad influence from those people mm. so whilst training our children we shouldn't those who have children we shouldn't be afraid to say so how is my child going to grow in this um uh, in this environment as long as we are praying uh teaching them what god uh wants and uh teaching them to rely and to listen to the holy spirit training mm. them that they will be fine wherever they go and they will actually be a positive influence they will actually do a greater work than what we were doing ourselves mm. uh, i will leave the next one to mara the next quotation great you know i was thinking of how it said that the garments of the children were prepared in such a way that they would conceal um portions of the scripture in the hem of the garments so i was sharing with the babies that it's quite interesting the clothes that you wear now sweeties are you able to hide the scripture of god there you know it's it's really just a side note but probably something to think about and um it's saying that but their education from childhood had been a character to prepare them for all this so their education from childhood was to prepare them to be missionaries and now we are told by inspiration that the reason why we have children is to fill up the ranks of the fallen angels so are you raising little children that will be able to fill up the ranks of fallen angels mm. or little devils to torment us on this earth well i don't know but i'll move on okay um adamilu is saying hello from romania happy sabbath happy sabbath and thank you for joining us from romania great we praise jesus the next quote is on page 65 for those that are just joining we're doing the great controversy we're on chapter four um the topic is the wild dances okay mm -hmm. so i'm on page 65 and it's saying the spirit of christ is a missionary spirit <laughs> the very first impulse of the renewed heart is to bring others to the savior so daisy's question was mm -hmm. um if i repent okay uncle Dibs is trying to find it uh, that's probably a bit okay i think maybe yeah it's just gone daisy was saying that no no go okay yeah. daisy was saying that if i repent so if i if we just read the bible and keep the commandments but don't necessarily go and mm. preach the word like the wild dances did does it mean that we don't qualify for heaven mm. i don't know about qualification yeah. but i do know that it means you're not converted yeah, the right. first impulse of a converted person the first impulse when your heart is changed is to go out and preach okay yeah, so okay do you want to get it now or when i finish Okay, you can make what I want. Okay, go on. Okay, okay what well, I just want. Okay, maybe you touch on it to say what's sharing with um with other people what you know. You know, usually when we look at preachers or um, pastors, the moment you think about sharing the word of God is maybe you should do it the way someone is doing it. 
and you feel like you don't have someone you a, a platform to preach or someone whom you can influence we have so you know at work the, the um, person who said to be quiet if you get to their workplace or with their friends when they are with their friends they actually say something that's a platform to preach uh, there's a platform for you to share something that uh, you have learned, something that you have actually read. So every one of us um, has somewhere to preach. We actually have an opportunity each and every day. As long as you are meeting people, talking to someone, you actually have a platform to preach. You might not actually open a Facebook page or go on the pulpit, but you actually have uh, a chance to preach. Uh, you can go. Maybe I'll sing my song at the end of this. My Christianity song. So you can make it for me? Alright. It's in the chart. Alright. Okay. Alrighty, I, I've just been reminded of something. There's a song that we used to sing that speaks of Christianity that your conduct in revealing Christ is not based on what you say. Mm. It starts on your decorum, how you carry yourself. As a Christian, you actually then speak. So we have some exceptional cases. You know the lady in John chapter 4 who meets Jesus at the well. Mm. Her first impulse after she was converted was to run to the city and say, guys, come and see, I've seen a man. Mm. Okay? So when you are changed, the reason why you have not found the strength to say it is probably that you haven't been changed. Him who is forgiven much, mm. loves much. Mm. So you probably don't feel that, you know, God has taken me from the gutters to some serious place. But I'm sure if you have friends and if you have people that you talk to, which I assume you do, you are able to share God with them. So we are not saying that you should go out and spread the word to people, but in your associations, in your WhatsApp groups, in your circle of friends, do people know that you're a Christian, you're seeing God and you are representing God? That's basically what it's about. So um, I was speaking on that, the spirit of... Um, the spirit of Christ is a missionary spirit. What better example do we have of what it means to be a missionary than that of Christ himself? That he laid down his life for us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's the best example that we have of a missionary spirit. And so this is what we need to follow. Should you be a parent, Daisy? I'm thinking if it's Daisy, the one I know. Mm -hmm. Yes, she's a mommy. Should you be a parent? It says that your first and the noblest mission field that you can have is that of your baby. What a blessed opportunity. So you can share Jesus with your baby. When you're changing her nappy, you can sing a song. You can share the love of God. And that's missionary work that you do. But the impulse of a converted soul is that you share others with Jesus. Oh, to answer you, I just remembered something. Actually, it does mean that you won't go to heaven sorry because <laughs> the code says there'll be no starless crowns in heaven so if you have not done something to win a crown for christ a star then you can't be in heaven that's what ellen might say sorry it's not me but there'll be no starless star in heaven so may god help us to share christ verbally or non-verbally it really just boils down to sharing others are good at preparing meals on a sabbath just find a meal to give to someone and someone sees God in what you do. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Uncle Leaves, do you have the next one? Uh, I think we're running out of time. Yeah. yeah. I think maybe I'll just summarize the, the next one. I think I still have. Yeah. Uh, oh, so you can choose the last one? Oh, um, the last the two. The last two, okay. Right. Uh, this one is saying, um, they saw that the, under the guidance of Pope and priest, multitudes were vainly endeavoring to obtain pardon by afflicting their bodies for the sin of their souls, taught to trust to their good works to serve them. They were ever looking to themselves, their minds dwelling upon their sinful condition, seeing themselves exposed to the wrath of God, afflicting soul and body, yet finding no relief. You know, um, what I learned from these guys is uh, they were actually going against the, the teaching that was there at, at those times. That for us to gain um, uh, the favor of God, we have to uh, pain ourselves or sacrifice ourselves, uh, which is actually not the thing. What we are supposed to do is actually to have faith in God, that when we believe in Him, 
when we confess our sins, the moment we confess and we start accepting what the Holy Spirit is teaching us, the Lord will forgive us and we'll actually gain favor from God. Mm. So, the, you know, there's uh, sometimes when preachers teach us that the only thing that we can do to gain favor from God is our works, which is not true. Mm -hmm. What we only need is to have faith in God and depend in Him. There is no way you can do works that are perfect in um in the sight of god to gain favor from him even it's even said our prayers themselves mm. are not even pure enough to get to to god the way they are but because god so loves us he just wants us to accept him and him living through us are uh, the next quotation that i'm going to 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 read which is going to be my last quotation it says they were not accused of idler they were not accused as idlers or dishonest or disordered, but it was declared that they had an appearance of piety and sanctity that seduced the sheep of the true fold. Mm. Therefore, the Pope ordered that malicious and abominable sect of malignants, it, they refused to abjure, to, the, to be crushed like venomous snakes. I just want to, to explain the first one. You know, the times that we are living in are so difficult. I'm always talking to Mara to say, you know, little things that you do, uh, it's easy for you to be corrupt. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to earn a living right now, maybe taking some things from South Africa, wherever, whatever you are doing, uh, even just coming to town, you just have to bribe a policeman and do some things. But it is said about the wild dances, these guys were so pure in whatever they were doing. Mm -hmm. The authorities tried to look, uh, to say, what can we find uh, which is uh, maybe, which is not good what they're doing or um, uh, in ways they are not honest. But these guys were pure in everything they mm. did. We should actually uh, pray to God that whatever we do, we are always honest so that when time for persecution comes or even now, when someone looks at you, even when you are trying to preach the gospel of God, they don't have little things to say. You know, in as much as he preaches like this, in as much as he says he's, uh, he prays to God, um, he has these little things that he does. Maybe he flirts with uh, some people's wives, some people's husbands, or he's not honest. He's he's not uh, loving at work or whatever. Let's try to be perfect in whatever we do. May God help us, and we can only do this by giving ourselves to God each and every moment mm. that we are living. I will leave it to Mara now. Okay, I think I'll take the last one. Please connect this for me. I've just put, you know, it's said that in the last days, when the record, um, when people are going to be brought before judges, the people that are going to be the laws that are going to be enacted when the Sunday law is enacted are to punish the sabbath keepers but those that are brought before judges will stand with clean records on every other accept, aspect except that of keeping the sabbath holy and i was thinking about it Ruti, if my files are checked right now mm -hmm. your zimra files your text files your everything that you do mm -hmm. are your records clean and mm -hmm. your only fault is keeping the sabbath mm -hmm. your only fault like daniel is praying three times a day mm -hmm. you know that's the standard that we need to reach it's unfortunate that it's called the gospel of words and legalism to keep the law of god but it is really responding to the commandment that god has given us and so our records should be faultless the people in your neighborhood should find nothing against you to say, ah, you know what, some things we may talk about, but Tunom Vulosh is really a good person. Mm -hmm. They should be able to say, when we're doing John Wycliffe, the quote was saying that both the enemies or friends of John Wycliffe said that this person is a really powerful person. Mm -hmm. Reach that point where your enemies, they just don't like you, but they know that you have the spirit of God within you. So my last quote is saying that in secret places, the word of God was thus brought forth and read, sometimes to a single soul, sometimes to a little company who were longing for the light. Often entire night, the entire night was spent in this manner. You know, it's so easy that temptation that social media has brought to us is that effectiveness is now measured by numbers mm. to say because you have 
um, 59 people who have liked this when only two people like it, it's not effective. But this is saying that sometimes the entire night was spent for one night. The entire night was spent for one person. one person. And this reminded me of a quote that said, even if there was one person on this earth, Jesus would have still come and died for that one person. How amazing is that? May God help us not to measure our success or absence of it thereof based on how many people we have seen coming through, but reaching the person who needed most to hear the gospel. So I'm going to read... Um, no, actually, we're going to pray, and um, Uncle Leaves, I don't know if you have anything to say, or should I sing while people type their prayer requests? Yeah. What do you think? All right, so I'm going to sing a song while people type in their prayer requests, then we'll go through the comments after I sing the song, and we will pray and go. Should you have any question, please type it in um, as I sing as well, and um, we'll be good for the day. Alrighty, um, this one. I'll need to check the levels. Okay. Please just tell me if the volume is fine.
Praise Jesus. We praise Jesus. Um, indeed. Okay, mommy's saying she wants to hear the song in Debel. That's fine. I'm going to come to you for the translation. And then you can give me the Ndebele translation. Nalulu. And we will sing it in Debele. I'm going to go through the comments now. As um, we prepare to pray. Those that have prayer requests, please keep typing them in. And we'll go through them. Um, powerful, powerful. Indeed, we praise God. Uh, bless you too, bless you too. Okay, um, okay, Pride is saying quite frightening. A quick self introspection will prove a lot is not right with us. God help us. Indeed, may God help us. Um, we pray for strength that's possible. In course, say, indeed, till next time. Bless you too. May the Lord bless you too. Thank you for the powerful lesson. And may God, indeed, may God help us this evening. And may God um, bless you too. Uncle Dips, do you mind helping? Thank you. Um, Pride is saying, Lips, please join in the singing. He did, he did. Okay, we'll try to do his favorite song next week. It's a kiddie song, but it's his favorite, so we'll try sing that one. Amen. Okay, Tari saying we had missed the voice indeed. Um, we praise Jesus. Okay. Okay, Mr. Nyati is saying Uncle Lips sound great indeed. I always tell him he does. Um, Tembela is saying with reference to the point liberty mentioned about how it is so simple to be corrupt these days because of all that is happening around us. Like even having to bribe cops so that we may get into town, etc. Um, may we please pray for the strength and ability to remain pure and stand firm in Christ's principles. Come what may. Amen. Amen. That's very true. I, 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 I think in reference to this, I don't know, but it's something that's practical. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we can actually bribe the cops and come to town or do some things to actually earn a living. You know, I've actually seen these days, it's really difficult. Uh, most people are out of their jobs. They survive from buying and selling. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're going to pray, please pray for us. You know, I don't mean to accuse anyone because me, I'm not well prepared for, for the times that you're living as well. It can happen to anyone. But the times that we are in and the times ahead, are just going to become more and more difficult. Mm -hmm. If we are going to rely on um, the conventional way of doing things, on the way that uh, the cities provide for us and stuff, I think uh, it goes back to the issue that we are supposed to start to withdraw ourselves mm -hmm. from the cities bit by bit, bit, by bit mm -hmm. from uh, trying to be self-reliant. Mm -hmm. Because the more we are relying on these things, the more we will face the, the temptations to be corrupted mm. and every day. I know we have so much dreams. Uh, some of us, we have just graduated. We want to achieve this and this and this. But we should ask the Lord, am I supposed to be a billionaire in this world? Or what's bigger than actually uh, attaining the, the eternal life? So it's something that we really need to do. I don't know if we'll get a chance to have. I don't have all the answers. But it's something that's practical. We can be bribing. What we are learning is to depend on uh, the things of this world. Mm -hmm. Yet we are actually losing the eternal life. Amen. So we need to pray each and every day. Okay. Amen. Yeah. Okay. Should I go on? Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, someone is praying. Pray for us, um, the parents, so that we don't misrepresent Christ mm. to our kids. To be good examples and true Christians to them. Amen. Amen. Okay, mommy is saying that no, no, that's fine. You can watch it later or join us next week at 3 p.m. There's no problem. Um, okay, Daisy is responding to Mr. Mbella's point. Exactly. Um, Mr. Nyati is saying, pray for us to read as a family. Powerful will do. And Cheryl is saying, amen. Pride is sending us love. Thank you. We love you too. All righty. So we have seen the prayer requests. I will pray. 
should there be any more requests please feel free to type them in and we'll pray for them even after any requests that you might have that you want me to pray for in my inbox that's still fine i can do so should you need a copy of the great controversy the soft copy um we'll be able to provide it to you just um send us your whatsapp number okay daisy is saying um let's be let's pray for the means to be able to do country living some of us we are looking for homes in the country please pray for us okay sweetie we'll be praying for you we share the same request we are also looking into that and praying about it so let's be praying for each other as we look into it okay let's pray our kind and heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this beautiful Sabbath that you gave us. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to fellowship and to just talk to our brothers and sisters, our parents. We thank you, Lord, for the love and the support and everything that you provide for us. We ask for the forgiveness of our sins and the cleansing of all our iniquities where we have sinned knowingly and unknowingly. Savior, please pardon us. Cleanse us with the blood of Jesus. May we be perfect as you are perfect and holy as you are holy in everything that we do. I bring Tembela into your hands. She's asking that you help us, Lord, not to be corrupt. You know, this world is so filled with so many avenues to be corrupt. The basic thing of getting a license, you need to pay money. And it's really just becoming unbelievable. May you help us and preserve faithful men in such an evil and adulterous generation. May you help us, Lord, to be the channels that bring blessings to those who will even persecute us, Lord. We would like to pray for the parents that are asking that you help them to be um, examples of what Christianity should be to their children. May you continue to bless them that they may be a perfect example of what Christianity should be. May you also help those that are asking to leave Christianity in their lives. May you please help them and give them the strength. Daisy is asking that you may provide a country home for them. Lord, may you please meet them at their point of need. May you provide the resources that are needed and the wisdom and guidance that they need. And many more other people who might be looking into this option. Lord, may you meet them and provide what they need. We also pray, Lord, that after we have worked for you, may we not be found amongst those who will be lost. Protect us throughout this whole week. May you clear our path and remove whatever evil that might hinder us from coming to you. Till we meet again next week, in the name of Jesus Christ, we do pray. Amen. 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 We've reached the end of our session today. The book is The Great Controversy. Should you need a soft copy? Please inbox Auntie Mara or my WhatsApp number or Uncle Lib's WhatsApp number and we'll send you a soft copy of the book. We'll meet with next week. We are doing chapter five, which is John Wycliffe. And um, we'll be looking at that so you can read in advance. And should you have comments, questions or contributions, just type them in. Any questions with regard to previous lessons, just feel free to type them in as well. Bye. Bye. Have a great week and do take care. All right.